What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here, and like I said last episode, man, it is rivalry week, and I couldn't be more excited, man. If you're a college football fan, this is like one of the weeks that you circle, and you're like, I don't. Other than Thanksgiving on Thursday, I don't need any plans this week. It is straight football this week, and everyone should be excited. We dropped our first preview, and this week is so big. I said, why not make it two game of the weeks? We had Ohio State and Michigan earlier this morning. This will be our other game of the week. If you're new to the channel, smash the subscribe button and go ahead and comment your score predictions. If you predict the correct winner and the correct score, you win our $50 game of the week giveaway. We're doing two this week because it's such a giant week here in the college football world, man. But we have Bedlam, one of the best robberies in the country, and everything is on the line this weekend as number 10 Oklahoma travels to Stillwater to take on number seven Oklahoma State. And the Cowboys are a four-point favorite right now in a game in prime time, guys, 6.30 p.m. Central Time, live on ABC. This game is going to be one you cannot miss. And like I said, everything's on the line. This, this is the 116th matchup of this robbery, and this game has Big 12 championship implications, possibly college football playoff implications, and the entire country will have their eyes focused on Boom Pickens Stadium this Saturday night. So let's set the stage before we get into breaking down this matchup. The Cowboys, Oklahoma State, and Mike Gundy enter this one 10 and 1, 7 and 1 in the Big 12. They've already clinched their spot in Dallas for the Big 12 championship, but Gundy and the squad could get a signature win for their college football playoff resume this weekend. And they could have, if they get a win here, they could have all the momentum in the world as they enter the postseason and could possibly, with a win this week and possibly next week, have, have a chance to have their first college football playoff appearance in school history. Now, on the other side, the Sooners enter this one 10 and 1 as well, 7 and 1 in the Big 12, and they have to have a win this weekend to clinch their spot in Dallas for the Big 12 championship. That'll be the fifth straight time they've been to. Uh, the Big 12 championship, and this team's back, coming back from a huge win over Iowa State. And Lincoln Riley, a win this weekend, will help him put his team firmly back into possibly the college football playoff race, but will set up a Bedlam Part 2 in Dallas next weekend but for where all where everything's on the line. All the marbles are there. Now, Bedlam, I mentioned, is one of my favorite rivalries in the country. Dates back to 1904. The Sooners have historically dominated this matchup to a record of 90 and 18 with seven ties in the history as well. A six-game win streak currently for Oklahoma. And Oklahoma State's last win came in 2014, but the Cowboys have not won in Stillwater since 2011. So everything is riding on this one. Now, I, I'm, I'm trying to possibly work my way down to Stillwater this weekend. I'll let y'all know. So if you see me, say what's up. I'm going to I'm gonna possibly try to get down there for this game. But the, the stage is set. Let's get into the keys of the game. We'll start with Oklahoma State. The key for this team, and, and I mentioned it last week, and they did a solid job of it in their shutout win over Texas Tech, it lies in the rushing game. It's been the key for this offense all season long, and it really helps Spencer Sanders do an excellent job of working off the play action, which accounts for almost 50% of his dropbacks this off this season. They're going to have to make something happen. The Sooners defense is top five in the Big 12 with only 120 yards per game allowed on the ground. And so it's a much steeper test than what they had last week when they, when they went into Lubbock to face Texas Tech. Now, you look at the rushing attack for Oklahoma State. Top four in the Big 12, averaging almost a, almost 200 yards per game. They're about 195 right now, while they're, on, they're also averaging over two touchdowns per game on the ground. And they've leaned on an unexpected contributor, which should be back this weekend. I, I talked to some sources I have in Stillwater. Jalen Warren, injuries limited him last weekend, but the Cowboys are hopeful that he can return this weekend. He's been the key to this offense, man. Over 1,000 yards rushing. Five yards per carry and 10 rushing touchdowns for the Utah State transfer that a lot of people didn't even think would see the field this year. And due to injuries and some, and, and some shuffling in that running back room, Jalen Warren has become one of the faces of this offense for Oklahoma State. Now, 
He's still top five in rushing yards. He's tied for six in rushing touchdowns. But the two names you got to know, quarterback Spencer Sanders, his legs will be important. And also an unexpected contributor last week who led the team in rushing was Dominique Richardson. Almost 400 yards rushing, almost five and a half yards per carry and three rushing touchdowns. He's top 17 in rushing touchdowns and top 12 in yards per carry in the Big 12 this year. Richardson, if Warren can't go, Richardson's going to step into that X-factor role at the running back spot because Oklahoma State is going to have to run the football. You look at the key. The one team that's beat Oklahoma this year was Baylor. Ran They ran the football repeatedly, and they played tough defense. And I think this Oklahoma State team is built perfectly to replicate that exact game plan that Dave Aranda really laid out against this Oklahoma team. And also Spencer Sanders, over 400 yards rushing, five rushing touchdowns. You look at what Bohan and at Baylor did against this Oklahoma defense. If Sanders can replicate that, Oklahoma State is going to be brutal to stop this weekend for the Sooners. Now, you look at how they thrive rushing the ball. I mentioned that they really utilize their between-the-tackle runs a lot, but it puts a lot of pressure on the interior of the D-line, but these running backs do a great job bouncing things outside. When you look at their when you look at their edge rushing, nine rushing touchdowns, 30 first downs generated, 20 explosive runs, and they can make you miss. They have almost 300 yards after contact when running outside. Now the B gap is the other explosive one. Almost five and a half yards per carry, 35 first downs, 16 explosive runs when running behind the guards. So those are the two places Oklahoma is going to have to be stout at. The linebackers are going to have to play big time football this weekend, and the and Nick Benito on the edge and some of these D linemen are going to have to play tough because if if you let Warren Richardson or Sanders get outside your defense, it could be a long day. And just on scrambles, Sanders has over 200 yards rushing. He's averaging over eight yards per carry when he gets out the pocket, has got nine first downs on broken plays and eight explosive runs. If you're Oklahoma, you have to put a spot on Sanders. If he gets loose with his legs like Bo Hannon did, it's going to be much of the same for Oklahoma that they had two weeks ago, and you cannot have that happen. Now, on top of the rushing attack, Sanders is going to have to be explosive. I mentioned it last week against that Texas Tech offense. This is even a more dire situation. This Oklahoma offense is going to turn it up and aim to turn this into a shootout with explosive play after explosive play. You have to unleash Sanders' arm on this one. The secondary for Oklahoma has not been the strong point, so can Sanders work off the play action and take some shots? You look at Sanders this season, almost 2,000 yards passing, 15 touchdowns, six picks, top five in the conference in passing yards and passing touchdowns. He's had a very solid year, but where he thrives is a place where Oklahoma's probably going to struggle at times, and that's that intermediate passing. If he can just if he can just be efficient and accurate, these wide receivers are going to be able to make some plays in space. In that intermediate range, he's completed over 64% of his passes, over 11 yards per completion, eight touchdowns, a 91.6 passing grade, according to Pro Football Focus, and over 43 first downs generated. That's where he can make his living, and that's where I expect Oklahoma State to attack. Tay Martin has to have a big game, too. He's my X-factor wide receiver, over 700 yards on over 50 catches and six receiving touchdowns. And hopefully the Cowboys also hope Brennan Presley will be able to play this weekend. But if not, Tay Martin is going to have to be the guy at wide receiver. But those are the keys for Oklahoma State. Let's move to the Sooners now. And I mentioned this key when I covered the Baylor game. And it's going to be the same thing here, man, because that this is what was missing it two weeks ago against Baylor, and that's Kayla Williams. He has to get loose this weekend. If you're Lincoln Riley, you have to put the ball in his hands and tell him to go be a playmaker. He has been the key for the Sooners when they've had their big performances. They need more consistent play, and they need Williams to be explosive because that's when this offense really hits another level. He's been a great quarterback since he's taken over the job. He's had a tough past two weeks. He didn't play his best last week, but well enough to win. But this team's still averaging over 440 yards per game and is 10th in the country with almost 39 points per game scored. 
you look at Williams, man, 1,400 yards passing, 15 passing touchdowns, only four turnovers, has almost 400 yards rushing and six rushing touchdowns in limited action this season. He didn't really take over the job till midway through the season. He's still top five in the Big 12 in passing touchdowns and still leads to conference in passing efficiency. So Caleb Williams is going to be extremely important this weekend. And the number one thing that I saw, and I mentioned this on my Baylor preview, I want to reiterate it, Williams and Rattler really really run this offense extremely differently. Williams is able to create his own play more often. Almost 50% of Rattler's dropbacks were, un- were from the play action. Williams is almost under 40% of the time, and it really allows Lincoln Riley to open the playbook up. With no play action, he's completing over 71% of his passes, eight touchdowns, a 93.4 passing grade, and over 40 first downs generated. That's where that's where Williams really thrives. And over 52% of his passes have come 10 plus yards down the field. And his ability to stretch to stretch the field is something that was missing with Rattler. Is only 8% of Rattler's throws were deep balls. So Caleb Williams is going to have to stretch the secondary, put pressure on them to make plays. We're going to get into it in a second because, of course, y'all know that's the matchup to watch. But this is going to be an intermediate battle, too. Just like Spencer Sanders, Williams also thrives in the intermediate range. It's his most used depth of pass at over 30%. A 61% completion percentage, seven touchdowns, no turnovers, and a 95.1 passing grade. This is where Williams is going to thrive. Make the linebackers and make the safeties make plays over the middle if you're Caleb Williams. And it was something that was really missing in that Baylor game. They really got him uncomfortable. And Caleb Williams needs to have his best performance this weekend in Stillwater for Oklahoma to win. And also, you can't ignore the rushing attack either. You know, Oklahoma State ranks number one in the Big 12 in total defense, but they also have the number one rushing defense, less than 85 yards per game and less than three yards per carry. Kennedy Kennedy Brooks and Eric Gray are going to have to have some type of production. You cannot make it one-dimensional and allow Oklahoma State to pin their ears back and get after Williams. Kennedy Brooks is going to have to have a big game. He's had giant games in this robbery. So this is going to be another big moment. And I'm a huge Eric Gray fan. I mentioned before the season, I thought he was going to be a bigger factor. I need to see Eric Gray become a focal point of this offense behind Brooks and do some more things through the air. The number one thing Gray brings is that receiving back aspect. And I feel like it's been underutilized to this point. I want to see both of these guys have big games. Brooks has over almost a thousand yards rushing. 10 rushing touchdowns and is really a type of running back that can take over a game. So I need to see these running backs give Williams a little bit of help and have this defense guessing at what they're going to do. That way they can't just pinpoint on Williams and get after him kind of like Baylor did late in the game. Now the matchup to watch strength, strength versus strength matchups are my favorite thing to talk about. And this Oklahoma wide receiving core against this Oklahoma State secondary should have every single college football fan drooling over watching what's going to happen this weekend. I think this is going to play the biggest role in determining who wins this matchup because the Sooners wide, the Sooner wide receivers have to make plays down the field. They have to find a way to create separation, and they have to make sure they help out their young quarterback. But this Cowboys secondary – They're great at at breaking balls up. They're great at forcing turnovers, and they don't allow many explosive plays. So something has to give this weekend in Stillwater. Now, the wide receiving core is a huge strength of this team. I mean, they're a huge part in this passing attack, averaging over 260 through the air, over two touchdowns per game, and they have to have a huge performance. You look at Jadon Hazelwood, Mario Williams, Marvin Mims, and Jeremiah Hall are probably going to be the X factors at the tight end. Stoner is a problem as well, a matchup nightmare. But I want to see Marvin Mills have a game. Man. This kid, I think, has the potential to be one of the best wide receivers in the country. You know, 29 catches, 644 yards. He's averaging over 22 yards per catch and four receiving touchdowns. I want to see Marvin Mills have one of these just legendary type games. So I think he's going to be the key to getting this passing attack back to that explosive nature that we saw earlier this season. Now, Hazelwood and Williams can also do their thing. Also, Michael Woods, the transfer from Arkansas, could have a big game as well. But these guys have to go 
like I said, create separation and help out your young quarterback. You have to you have to give him some easy throws, and if he hits you underneath, you have to make some something happen in space and go be explosive. Being explosive should be the number one key for Oklahoma this weekend because you know this Oklahoma State offense hasn't necessarily been the most explosive this year. Yes, they were explosive against TCU, but outside of that, they haven't been a team that put up 40, 50 points. If you can turn this into a shootout, you have a great opportunity to win this game. So explosiveness, explosiveness, explosiveness is the key for Oklahoma. Now, Oklahoma State, the secondary has been a giant key for this team, especially in making this late college ball playoff push. They rank number one in passing defense, only allowing six passing touchdowns all season long and having eight interceptions um, You know, over the season. Now, there's so many names you could cover. Jarek Bernard Converse. Seven pass break breakups, only one one touchdown allowed. Christian Holmes, one touchdown allowed. Less than 130 total yards allowed as the primary defender. Less than 45 percent completion percentage completion percentage when he's the primary defender. Tanner McAllister, one touchdown, one INT. Less than 120 yards allowed. Jason Taylor hasn't allowed a touchdown. Has has two interceptions. But the key guys, man, one of them just got back from injury. Trey Sterling and Colby Harville Peel are the are the old guys in the back in the back end of this defense that are going to be keys. Harville Peel zero touchdowns allowed, three picks and less than 150 yards allowed. Sterling's been banged up this year, but he should be back this weekend and he can be the heart and soul of this defense. You know, without his injury, he still hasn't allowed a touchdown, but he's missed a lot of time this season. But I think all these guys have the ability to really play a large role if they can force some turnovers and get Oklahoma State's offense on the field to wear down this Oklahoma defense. Oklahoma State is going to be a tough, tough team to beat. So that's why this is the key, man. What's going to give? Is the secondary going to continue their elite performance this year, or are these wide receivers going to have an, another explosive game for the Sooners? And that's going to be something to watch. Now, for my prediction, man, the Cowboys are a four-point favorite. You know, I was a huge Oklahoma fan coming into the season. I said they should be preseason number one. I thought this team was going to just run through the Big 12 and – as the season went along, Oklahoma State has improved week in and week out. That team that only beat Missouri State by seven week one is not the same team we see suited up today. They had an explosive performance against TCU, shut out a, a, a solid Texas Tech offense last weekend on the road in primetime in an upset potential game. They're playing their best football. Oklahoma looked much improved last week since that Baylor loss. And all season long, Lincoln Riley's team has had close games, but they just found ways to win. So we have two resilient teams, a defensive-minded team that runs the ball a lot versus just a high-flying offense with a defense that is a bend-but-don't-break approach. Who is going to prevail for me, I trust Oklahoma State right now, and I trust that defense is playing at such an elite level. I trust this defense to get after Caleb Williams. I see them giving him some problems in the front seven, and the secondary, I think, gets a handful of turnovers to really make Oklahoma uncomfortable. I still think due to the rivalry game and Oklahoma's ability as a quick strike offense, I think they keep it close for the majority of the game. I just think a late mistake allows Oklahoma State to pull away with this one. I have the Cowboys this weekend, 27-20 over, over the Sooners this weekend. I think a seven-point win for Oklahoma State as they go to the Big 12 championship. And as long as Baylor wins, it will be a Baylor-Oklahoma State matchup next weekend in the Big 12 championship game. But Oklahoma State 27, Oklahoma 20 this weekend in Stillwater. Guys, Comment your score predictions below and subscribe to enter our Game of the Week giveaway. And also, man, hit that like button on the video and let me know your takeaways on the game down below. Appreciate y'all tuning into the Blue Bloods. We have the best college football content on YouTube. We have so much more coming for this rivalry week, which is the best week in college football, man. But I appreciate y'all tuning in. Y'all have a great Thanksgiving week, and I will be back later with some more college football content. But for right now, guys, the Blue Bloods are out.